we really want to see the smart grid for our community grow and the smart grid is basically along the internet connectivity of things except in this idea it's in the energy industry so we want to see the smart grid used to connect to devices like your fridge your car your solar panels on your house and anything else you could think of that we can use to control to match those loads to our generation Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. We've heard about smart grids and energy storage as futuristic solutions for integrating large amounts of renewable energy onto the grid. But Summerside Prince Edward Island is doing it now. Yes, we do. Uh, Summerside Electric, which is owned by the municipality, has a 12 megawatt wind farm and we also buy another 9 megawatts which gives us about 46% integration of wind for our system. And Prince Edward Island itself has a total of 202 megawatts of wind on a peaking system of 270 megawatts. Greg Goody is Director of Municipal Services for the City of Summerside PEI. And you heard right, Summerside gets 46% of its electricity from wind power, the highest proportion of any municipality in North America. In 10 short years, PEI replaced nearly all of its 200 megawatts of expensive diesel generation with cheap wind power. Now the challenge is what to do with the extra wind power. In Summerside, Summerside Electric, we have too much wind at times. So we have so much wind integration in our system, we have to export that wind to outside markets and we don't get very much value for that. So to offer it to the community value, we came up with a program called Heat for Less Now, which is using the excess energy, timing it to the control of the appliances, to use that energy locally to heat people's homes and hot water for a discounted value of approximately 35% from what they would pay for it normally. Instead of using expensive batteries, Summerside started building a smart grid and working with residents to install furnaces and hot water heaters that store excess wind energy for later use. This is called what we call our energy thermal storage system and it's an appliance that's based off a room heater. This size unit would heat a small room and there's also units that do a whole home for our furnaces or businesses. And what's inside here is you see ceramic bricks are heated up to a temperature of anywhere from 1200 degrees Fahrenheit for a room heater and as high as 1600 degrees Fahrenheit for a furnace. And the low temperature they go to is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The energy can be stored for upwards of three days before it can be used or distributed into the home. It's pretty innovative. Summerside sells excess cheap wind power to residents at a discount if they install energy storage furnaces and hot water heaters. Here's how the hot water heaters work. So this is our hot water tank and what you can see around the outsides is a foam insulator that goes the complete version of the tank which makes it much more efficient than regular tanks. The tank itself will lose uh, one quarter degree per hour versus a regular tank of one degree per hour. And we heat the hot water on the inside here to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, what you'll find is we put a mixing valve on the top of the unit and it's set for 140 degrees. So you have cold water and hot water mixing to the proper temperature for people's homes. So we over temperature them so we can avoid peak demands. We can pre-charge the energy of the water and with such hot water being mixed, it lasts a lot longer before it needs another charge of energy. So we can time that to our wind farm and avoid our peaks. It's a win-win. When the wind blows, Summerside Utility turns on 300 furnaces and hot water heaters to store extra energy that will be used by homeowners when the wind isn't blowing. And if you sink it well with the wind energy, it can sink that energy quite fast. Just to give you an idea, 300 units at approximately 200 and 40 premises in the community is sinking up six and a half million kilowatt hours. So it's sinking up almost 10% of our wind production. Instead of spending huge sums of money on diesel power or imported power, PEI is now making millions of dollars on its wind electricity. And with its Heat for Less Now program, Summerside gets 46% of its electricity from wind power. In our program, we're finding that by replacing fossil fuels in the community. A lot of people in Summerside, in Prince Edward Island, have used fossil fuels to heat their homes in hot water 
over the years because electricity prices have been high. So we're finding with displacing those emissions from fossil fuels and using renewable energy from the wind to power the hot water and heat, we're seeing a 42% to as high as 85% reduction in the home's greenhouse gas emissions. Summerside has installed smart grid infrastructure to 30% of the homes in the city. The success in this program is certainly being monitored by PEI's Minister of Energy, Paula Bigger, who's in the process of updating PEI's energy strategy. Well, I think uh, one of the things that's out there right now um, is uh, thermal storage as well. And uh, I would really like to expand that across BI. It is a unique program to, to Summerside the, that we're in now, but uh, I'd like to, to have that expand more. PI invested in wind power out of necessity. Diesel power was breaking the bank and they needed a new local source of affordable electricity. Today, PI gets 26% of its electricity from wind power. Summerside piled on and built its own wind farm, but then took the whole idea to the next level with this innovative form of energy storage. Summerside now gets 46% of its electricity from wind and just 1% from diesel generators that are now used as backup. Check out our blog, podcast, and photos at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. In less than a decade, Prince Edward Island replaced most of its on-island diesel generation with much cheaper wind power. In this episode of Green Energy Futures, we find out how the province integrated the largest proportion of wind power in North America.